Good evening and welcome to Dungeons, Dice and Dudes, a 5th edition D&D podcast where we take those three things, put them in with avocado and make some guacamole. Nice. That sounds really gentrified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On toast, the only oh. way to have it. Sourdough? $10 a pot, oh. 100%. Oh, damn. Pandering to our American audience there. <laughs> Rather transparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Dan Lowe, your dungeon master for this evening, and I'm joined by Nathan, who plays Slevin. Yo, what up? Uh, Matt, who plays Muagor. Oh, me second. We're jumping over the table now. Whoa. Hello. Mark, who plays Otto, and also does our production. And George, who <laughs> plays the game. Who knows what I am? <laughs> Does he play oh, the game? Does does he does <laughs> 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 Who also does music and oh, what else do you do? Art? Yeah, I'm what here. do you do? What do you do? Why I'm are just you? here. I'm just here for the vibes. Could vibe. you leave? <laughs> <laughs> I eat a lot of popcorn. Good vibes. That's this, what I do. this is what you're here for. Um, if you want to find out more about our vibes and who we are and what we do and what we're up to, where could they find that information? Um, you can find it on the stream below, um, but you, for those listening, you can find us at DDND Pod. That's DDND Pod. Uh, that's on places such as Instagram and Twitter or X now, um, and plenty of other places. Lots of lovely content, pictures, and um, all loads of fun stuff. But there's also places to get moving images as well, such as TikTok. Uh, the tickest of the toughest. Um, so yeah. And this bit. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, there's other places that you can get um, videos as well, such as George. Oh. Is oh, this is the other thing he does. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Size yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, just. Oh, videos, man. Fuck. <laughs> They're great. You're blown up right now. This? <laughs> They're still on that trajectory. <laughs> 45 degrees and like, it's not stopping um, hey if you're not watching videos you need to get with the times if you want, remember your network is your net worth um, but yeah <laughs> if you want to see us uh, live you might already be doing it right now hello if you are. hi, hi. Um, you can search us up on twitch dd and d pod uh, we go live every wednesday now between the hours of 6 7 6 30 I don't know. We've never gone live. Seven? The evening. We go in the evenings live, Wednesdays fortnightly, <laughs> and then we also do a pre-record playback every Wednesday as well. Mm. Right. Just go on Twitch on a Wednesday night. We'll be there. We'll be doing there. Something. And then if not that, and you don't want to watch us live, why not? <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> but we do have YouTube as well. So you can search Dungeons, Dice and Dudes, where we put our uh, uploads of this VOD there as well. Wow, that was it was a journey. <laughs> there was so many. Yeah. <laughs> One of those sentences, it felt like all the words were in the wrong order. But yeah. I enjoyed having to unpack yeah. it. It's part of the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to further mix things up by going. Ooh, uh, uh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> is it me? It is. My sense I've just speak. looked at the things, and it makes actually more sense to to continue like the social side of things. So no segue for me then. Um, if you want to give us money, <laughs> wow! Well, nice. How? How? Do it! Why and how? Just do and it. Where? Uh, a fancy little website called Patreon where you can support our little show. Uh, the money has actually changed the lights in this place. That's the bit that I'm sticking with. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to get you to change yeah, yeah no one's attacking you bro <laughs> um, but yeah you can give us a couple of quids or bucks for our American audiences <laughs> um, to support what we're doing and even be in for a chance to be in the campaign uh, still got two patrons at the moment it's good <laughs> Zachary and Bruce Brooks mm-hmm. good thank you find people I think they're both plus two dudes, which is the top tier. The top tier. Oh, oh damn. Our patrons are growing d- just d- as d- fast d- as d- videos. D- oh. That trajectory. Just straight up. Five. It's just, it's yeah. going. It's going to keep busting through that ceiling. <laughs> Get me a protractor, baby. 
<laughs> all that money you spent on us, which you in, definitely will do, you might want to save some money. How can people do that? Well, I'll tell you. <clears throat> there's this uh, there's this wonderful trusted brand since 2013 by the name of Game Tea. They make uh, luxury handcrafted items for geeks and gamers worldwide. That's right. They ship worldwide. Wow, that was wow. awful. I'm actually wearing one. <laughs> He's wearing one. Worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> so if you fancy yourself some socks. Candles, oh. t-shirts, feet, dice, <laughs> feet, <laughs> socks. Sorry, maybe feet picks, <laughs> v bucks. <laughs> Man, the ad read <laughs> is just always just a nightmare to <laughs> get. Put the socks on your feet. Is what? Socks on my feet, Nathan. It's weird. <laughs> use discount code <laughs> the Briggsy to get yourself five percent off of your entire order. That's T H E B R I double G S Y to get five percent off of your entire order <laughs> do it and if you don't do it i'd question why <sighs> we're, we we've, we've we're got alienating we're on a mission today we're gesticulating now audience for the right reasons i think i know <laughs> someone for that <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> Right. Order. Usually at this point, I would show my own D and D podcast, thinking critically. Uh, where you can find out thinking critically at the UK, a D and D discussion podcast. However, don't get scared. I thought you were announcing the end of it then. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, obviously, for those who are on the stream or indeed watching us live, um, I've recently. With your help, most of your help, and indeed those around the table, oh. raised. <laughs> I'll give. I'll refund you. <laughs> I'll take it from the hands <laughs> of the sickly children <laughs> and say he didn't win his little card game. <laughs> so you don't get a card game. <laughs> nah, go on, go on. It was good. We I recently raised <laughs> one thousand one hundred and sixty-five pounds for Naomi House and Jack Place Children's Hospice. So yeah, thanks to all that supported and donated, and uh, yeah, fantastic, great weekend. You did marvelously, marvel, marvelously. Yeah, thanks. You're gonna have some content from it, aren't you? This Friday, the fifth, will be a highlight reel going up that I'm sure we'll share on our, our DDD socials. Uh, there's some good, there are some good screenshots. <coughs> Get ready to laugh. Like can, we, can we turn them into those uh, NFT files? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sell them for a, a sum. That's next episode's shill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're right. Tra- we're trending. We're trending. Right. Well. We're, we're coming in right at the right time. <laughs> um, I think that means we're ready to begin. <laughs> um, are you ready to begin, Nathan? I'm so ready. I'm What's trying that? to take a, a nondescript <laughs> picture of uh, it's just George. Uh, he's, too wily, he's too wily for that. Um, what? So those who those who are familiar with us on the stream and are up to date, of course. Uh, if you're not, you might want to cover your ears because there's some big spoilers from what happened at the last session. But it was the end of the prologue essentially, of the Ray Andor campaign. Uh, we had some deaths. <laughs> um, lots of things, lots of housekeeping to do, lots of things to wrap up, lots of things to catch up on. The guys were left in the desert. So today's introduction is going to be a little bit longer, as not only do we have to wrap up what happened last session, we also have to talk about what happened in a brief time skip, two weeks or so, in game time. Which almost brings us up to the regular cadence of how we're actually playing. So for the first time ever, in game time, I'll actually match mm-hmm. out of game time, which is <laughs> never going to happen again. <laughs> uh, so, without further ado, let me um, let me put the music up a little bit, and I'll do a poo, and I'll begin. Oh, God, get get him! I'm all right. Last <laughs> session, titled Cal and Cormac. R.I.P. There. Sp- spoilers, I guess. Still, <laughs> you revealed at the bottom of the now <coughs> now empty well, picking up a stone of good luck or a luck stone, depending on how you want to call it. On the way, returning to the surface with the help of Cormac and Bidis, you caught your breath and debated what you'd uncovered. 
deciding a quick jaunt back underground was necessary to close any final suspicions you may have had. Satisfied that you did have everything, you returned to the surface bringing the bloated corpse of Hamash with you, which revealed that, while definitely deceased, died in a different way to the others of the settlement. With Cormac tending to your wounds, you took refuge in the shade of the well. However, the midday sun was interrupted by an ominous eclipse that took hold, and a formidable creature apparated out of the shadows. Seven foot tall and deathly thin, bony appendages draped in the richest finery, with sunken black spheres where I should be. Joined by a horse with a flaming mane, the creature derided you with insults and put-downs, insinuating that you were too late to obtain the power it had already acquired from this place, and that there was nothing left for it here. As a show of power and a parting, parting gift, it attempted to kill Cow with a flick of its wrist. Cormac, wishing to save his friend, shoved Cal out of the way, taking the full power of the fatal attack. As the corpses of the villagers began to rise, the figure disappeared back into the shadows. Surrounded by undead horrors, Cal fought valiantly over the body of his former companion, before having the strength sucked out of him and collapsing on top. Slevin, Otto and Muagor dispatched the remaining creatures with the last of their strength, <clears throat> as the midday sun finally washed back across the grisly scene. Badis unconsolably breaks down next to the two bodies, screaming to the heavens, NOT AGAIN! WHY DID THIS HAVE TO HAPPEN AGAIN?! Deciding to leave Ulrecht as quickly as possible, you fashioned two sleds from the remains of the buildings and carts, if you remember they were dilapidated and in the ruins, and traipsed back through the desert, pulling Cal and Cormac behind you, taking a little bit longer this time. Ascending the cliffs, you pay off the whole dwelling creature, creatures, creatures without a second thought, and meet up with Arosh at the top, who has now started to move her caravan, her tribal caravan. Uh, Bedis still shell shocked. He returned to his family, still not catatonic, but very. That's two traumatic events in as many months. He is not having a good time. While Arosh offered your companions a tribal burial as recompense for them dying on the mission that she sent you on. Politely declining as you have other plans, she instead offers you a small stone with the image of a homestead chiselled into one side. It gently warms your hands. That's a magic item you just got. <laughs> At Duskbark, you meet back up with Saza and her crew on their return journey back to Faversham. The crew give Cal and Cormac a sailor's farewell, which turns out to be an evening of drinking and revelry, unsurprisingly. Grant, who I'm sure you all remember, attempts a rendition of Cal's Phoenix of the Seas, and while only a shadow of the original, everyone finds joy in the memories. Back in the big smoke of Faversham, the three of you, two and a half of you, are quickly summoned back to the castle. <laughs> no, ah, because Otto is not racist. part of the original oh, crew. Wow. Wow. Racist. He's not part of the original crew. <laughs> Shorty. Yeah, no, what is this? You're half the person. Right? <laughs> no, you're, uh, ironically, you're one of the whole people. <laughs> <laughs> back in the big smoke of Faversham, you are quickly summoned back to the castle. While Otto is requested to wait in the small antechamber that Slevin and Muagor you recognise from before. Ah, uh, yes. That Norik's aid brought you into. <clears throat> Good time. You Shh. have no idea what he's talking about. Little room, right? That's <laughs> the definition of a small antechamber. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> right back, ten sessions ago. Session one. <laughs> Norik's aide hustles Slevin and Muagor through basement corridors towards the sound of a large crowd. You hear a voice above the general hubbub in the distance. <laughs> and it is this scum that must be eradicated. A crowd cheers maniacally. The th floor thunders beneath your feet. The aid brings you through to the wings of a theatre. And from your position, uh, this is you two, sorry, Muagor and Slevin, <coughs> you can see Norik bathed in spotlight on stage, delivering an impassioned speech, which I will now share with you the first hunk of today's oh, is hunk, proceedings. Hello. Sexy boy! You got it? 
Whoa! Henry Cavell. <laughs> there he is, yeah. So, <clears throat> you see Norik bathed in spotlight, delivering an impassioned speech. They came here with nothing, expecting everything. They are parasites, expecting the doctor to heal them for free, the farmer to feed them out of charity. To make things worse, when they didn't get what they wanted, they attacked our families, our businesses. Need I remind you that Faversham is your city? We are all part of a great chain, and these outsiders are but rust. To that end, I have already resolved the issue through employment of an expert force to dislocate these bandits from our environment. Please welcome them. He outstretches an arm to the two of you in the wings of the stage. Oh. While still facing his adoring crowd, the aide all but pushes you out of the wings and into the light of the stage in front of a thousand or more Faversham citizens. An auditorium. Noriks begins to address the crowd again. A spectacularly talented polymath known the world over whose reputation precedes them. And an expression of confusion briefly appears on Norik's face as he looks at the pair of you before returning to its PR-trained broad smile. A physician and a therapist who travelled all the way from Genobaris to share their benevolence with the people of Faversham. The brewing dragonborn here to enrich our spirits and souls. And the golden child of the noble Doombolch dwarves rarely seen outside the mountain. The crowd explode. <laughs> Unfortunately, the polymath and the brewing dragonborn are unable to join us today. They're out there right now, making the streets safer for you and your families. Join me in once again thanking these heroes. He begins to walk you off the stage as the crowd are applauding you. Norik, returning to the centre of the stage, continues his diatribe as the aide brings you back into the antechamber. She offers you a farewell, leaving you with light refreshments and the remainder of your payment. I was going to say, give me my god. You meant. Several weeks pass. In that time, using the money you received from Norik, you arrange for transport of Cormac and his belonging, belong, belongings? belongings back to the Lynx Akasendalore tribe in the Roost. For Cal, now showing their true form, buried rumours suggest of a shapeshifter child at an otherwise unnoteworthy orphanage in Elisari. With that, the only thing to go on, you send him with all his earthly belongings across the oceans to the elven capital. Not before, however, Slevin adorns the bodies with friendship bracelets that were picked up in mm. session two, maybe even session one, I want to say. You. Nice. In session you. one. Uh, as a sign of the companionship to date. Using the resources available in the city, you begin researching around the figure that you saw that stole the lives of your companions. As you attend the temples and the libraries, the staff routinely suggest requesting access to Renarth's Foundation for the Talented, a prestigious magic school in the centre of the city that hosts a considerable archive of arcane knowledge. Before you can even begin navigating the red tape and bureaucracy associated with such a task, you receive a letter from someone called Olvara Ilian, inviting you to her office at the Foundation later that week, offering to assist in your search. Any questions? Is she hot? You don't know yet. You're not, you're not in her office. Is she going to be hot? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Uh, it was you two on stage. Weren't mm. you? Yeah. Can yeah. you run me perception checks, please? <clears throat> oh, he's good. Woo. Perception. Yeah. Any man? Eighteen. Ooh. Very perceptive. Perceptive little boys. Yeah, it was less than me though. Okay. So you didn't time. see anything. Mm. About time. <laughs> <laughs> In it. It's because it's so short. Yeah. It's half a man. Bruh. Twenty-one Bruh. and seventeen, right? 18 actually. Excuse me. <laughs> when you are on stage with Norik, uh, when your eyes adjusted to the spotlight and you're kind of like, whoa, there's a massive crowd in front of us that are all cheering, both of you notice and share a glance with each other. One person in the crowd 
maybe about 10 or so rows back, just off center, wearing quite a wide brimmed hat, is not jeering and shouting and yeah. frothing at the mouth of the rest oh, of the crowd. Where bloody miserable deal. And as, as you are ushered off stage by that... Norik, you see they also start to make their way out of the crowd. Quit them out. Nice. Um, <laughs> right, I need to show Shall you. Show me the bad man. The bad man. Uh, here. <laughs> what have you done? Uh, so, I've just shared with you. Go on. We're going to be getting like uh, something for all of that information, right? You want to put it somewhere? You want it in text? I need it in here. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> so, I've just shown you an image, hopefully, the stream can see it, of uh, Oos. Uh, what is known as Renarth's Foundation for, for, can't talk tonight. Foundation. Foundation for the Talented, or RFT for mm. short. Um, it's probably the second most ostentatious, biggest building in Faversham, second only to Norik's castle and keep at the centre of the city. Damn. This is, think Elven Harry Potter. It is massive, multi level, big mansion esque. You know, lots of land. Bunch um, of nerds. Bunch of nerds. Uh, as you pr- approach that part of town, that area of town, uh, this is for actually this is for everyone's benefit around the table. Um, you'll notice that the quality of living increases the closer you get to the school. So the houses are nicer, they're bigger, they've got more like front gardens and that kind of stuff. Where you were previously, where you were staying with the inns, near the docks and stuff, all of that was like Pop terrace in. houses and a lower standard of living, <laughs> <laughs> to be politically correct. Do they great. have like two poles of like a bit of wood just uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <come> on, man. <laughs> uh, and it's not it's not hard to find. It is there are there are signs. It is you know everybody's talking about it. You you, you could follow a stream of academics. And it would lead you to Renard's Foundation for the Talented. Um, wizard spires, big win- stained glass windows allowing in loads of light. Gated community, so uh, like wrought iron gates contain the compound within. There are gardens, there are fountains, there are trees. There is. It's, it seems as you approach that almost this is like the only bit of fountain that doesn't have clouds above it. It's, it's given you that kind of effect the vibe yeah just like passing over the, the houses next to it just leaving this Renaults Foundation in glorious sunlight <clears throat> Otto Slevin and Muagor you are at the front wrought iron gates where did that music come from? <laughs> it's, on, it's on the wind <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I mean, I've never, s- I've spent a many a year in Faversham, but never, uh, never been in here. That's for sure. Well, I mean, we definitely ain't been in here. <laughs> I don't Looks feel, nice though. I don't feel very welcome in here. So. Yeah, that's probably because you're half a man. What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's lucky they haven't got to, got to be this hard to. Oh um, yeah, because he wouldn't get in because he's so short. Don't be making jokes. We're not. They're not even on this level. He's yet. basically one of us at I'd, this point now. The two people I consider friends are gone. I'm stuck with you two now. That's not really a great way to make more friends, is it? Really? Yeah. Says the man making the joke about my height. <laughs> You're welcome for still being alive. Right, we need. We're here to find out about the thing we saw in the desert. Aren't we? We need to find more information. That's right. We need to find someone that can let us in. I'm going to try and barge past him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? I'm losing all my identity. <laughs> Put down to a small man. Someone, someone cast fireball, quick. It's only where I could like shoot him over. So that's like the perfect like lining up. <laughs> Roll uh, your barge check. 
which is <laughs> yeah. What is a barge check? Okay. X. <laughs> okay. To see twelve. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you want to stop can, his character <laughs> development. You can well athletics contested. Well, to get in, get, get the barge out. in before. No, to <laughs> stop being barged. <laughs> ah. Immovable force. Right. Well, I'll stop the wall jet, right? Yeah. Oh, but you're being helped, actually, so you get advantage. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, damn. Because I'm going to get flat <laughs> rolled. Uh, 16. <laughs> okay. Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> just as you're shit. talking about being insulted, you turn away for a second, and just as you do, you're spun around <laughs> as Slevin barges past you, quickly followed by. <laughs> Uh, Otto, as you're still Looney Tunes spinning on the spot, <laughs> I just sort of whisper, just shake it back. <laughs> Come on, where we go? I want Cal and Cormac back. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. Why did they have to die? <laughs> oh, this is. <laughs> Why could they have been me? <laughs> Charming me! Um, okay, shut up then. <laughs> you, you mentioned you have a new look. Do you want to oh, tell us? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because of my time in the desert. I've realised that walking around just topless all the time is not conducive to good skin and mm. just well-being. So I've now got like a three quarter length coat that doesn't go down too far. So I've still got the mobility of my legs. Still topless, but it covers, you know, the abs are still out, but the mm. shoulders in particular are protected from the sun. Uh, I've nice. got that little um, good luck stone on a little, little necklace. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm proudly wearing my friendship bracelet. <laughs> Did you leave the ring on Cal as a point of business? I think you took it. Here's the thing. <laughs> George, would you, is there anything in particular that you would want with it? Would you want it to continue with someone being him? Or what do you, what do you want? Do I want to have to do two voices? It's yeah. a question, right? I mean, you know. Hmm. If your character ends up being on wearing it, it does get a lot easier, speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> if they do what? If they're still on them? If, you end if up you're the it. one wearing it rather than somebody else wearing it. Oh, then you can how's that going to happen, though? Because you can just be like, <laughs> oh, this guy. Hello, I'm going to take this <laughs> ring off one of your dead friends. <laughs> well, we could have it. We'd be like, oh, we don't have any use of it. Would it have been worth value, the ring? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, considerable. It would have gone back with him to the uh, the orphanage to be sold on. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. As a piece of jewellery, and then when they whoever buys it will end up having some. Hey y'all, how you doing? <laughs> Yugi- hey, I'm dead. Uh, Yugi Moto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, yeah, it would have been sold. All right, there we go. There you go. We don't have to worry about it. Oh, gone easy. <laughs> Dead, dead. Cow is dead. dead. <laughs> you had that ring for uh, one session. <laughs> Magic item. But it kind of saved someone. Yeah. In a sense. It's a good hook for later on. Yeah, yeah there we go. <clears throat> uh, you begin to walk down this gravel path towards the main body of this mansion. Either side of your gravel path are like well manicured lawns with green uh, like stripes cut into them. There are a couple of sports courts on the on the lawn. You can see a couple of younger students playing sports on them, racket sports. And uh, yeah, people are coming and going, long gowns, usually carrying books of some kind, talking about think, stuff yeah. none of you understand. Wait, I'm sorry, what was that? I, I don't I like feel being like here. we were hearing a, a on I don't voice. like being here. <clears throat> Why not? Oh, is it because you're some sort of fancy royal that you decided not to mention to us? Mm-hmm. Is that Arts, it? It's artsy fartsy. What the hell? It's just all these people. I think they're above everybody else. Oh, I mean. I mean, he's got that. I do get the vibe of, you know, just. It's just all bit of that, isn't it, really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, maybe, but they've also, you know, studied very hard to know their magic and let, you know, you've just. You give me power, and then you're just like, I've got power. Looks like <clears> they're just. The old Nepo babies around here. Yeah. Whoa! Say, so, well, you know, we've had our ups and downs move your but Glad we can agree. This is not gonna ingratiate you in with him. Here, find something in the blink of an eye to be like, do you know what? I, I never did like Ricardo. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I know that. Nah, as yeah. long as, as, long long as, you, as you can. You've got good when you can. It's true, it's true. Oh, wait, I would have gotten. What would you have gotten? Sorry, I'm rummaging. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. Is there props? Has he got a bag of tricks this time? Has he got a bag of dicks? (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, whether you choose to wear it or not, I would have got a newer friendship bracelet as well. I definitely wouldn't wear that. Which would have been... <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> which would have been orange. Mine's silvery white. No. And also the coat is like, it, it's a darker colour, almost like a midnight, similar to my pants, but it's got these red, like, uh, kind of like embroidered inlays of like different like kind of swirls. Almost looks like blood spatters. Ooh, spatter. No, what you said. Do you still like things? just really like <laughs> viciously yeet it? Or do you No, I think I would I would scoff at it. <laughs> Not one of those ones where you throw it and kind of follow it. <laughs> You'd scoff at it. I'd scoff. They've just died. This is what I would have given it to you. Yeah but no you gave it to me didn't you? It's not like from cow. No, from but like cow. they died and on the way back I would have given it to you to be like, I wish I'd given it to them sooner. I feel like you were giving it to me. I wish I'd given it to them oh sooner. I guess, guess you're second best. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I Sorry, would, yeah, you're right. I found this file. I'd scoff at it. Here, <laughs> but then put it in my pocket. <laughs> Character development. Room. There's room for growth there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just as a, an FYI. Cool. Um, all right, okay, so we need a fan. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, student. Uh, there are there are two students kind of in, in a, what looks to be like a heated debate almost as they're approaching you, walking in the opposite direction away from them. Well, no, if you if you transmute the matrices in the other vortex, then surely it will work. Uh, hey, hey, excuse me, uh, quick question. You, yes, yes. Um, is the there... Dragon Balls come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where do they shit though? <laughs> no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. You sorry. No, 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 it's cool. I mean, we were all thinking it. You know, we need to find out a solid answer at some point. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm majoring in, <laughs> in transmutation, not anthropology. So I, I, I'm not best place to answer that question for you. No, no, no. I mean, we got. Have you tried the local toilets? <laughs> Hey, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, no, no, no. We need to speak to someone that's like in charge or something. Um, Do you need to know her name? Yeah, what's her name? Olvara Illen. Oh, Olva. No, no. Oh, she might have one. Hello. <laughs> that's not her name. Olvara. Yep. Ilian. Ilian. Yeah. Olvara Ilian. Uh, and the pair of them, that does actually stop them, and they. You have an audience with Olvara. Yeah. Well, you better head inside. Okay. Where? <laughs> and they gesture back down the the gravel path towards huge wooden doors into the mansion. Main I mean, body of the we mansion. could have figured out going into the big doors would lead. Them. Well, if you have a meeting, the receptionist will take care of it for you. Ah, oh, that's a good point. All right. Okay. Do you know what? I take that back. Hey, you seem like good people that got here on your own merit. <laughs> and as people with low social intelligence do, uh, they take that compliment at face value. Well, yes, obviously I've studied exceptionally hard to get to where I am today, and however, I must have to cut this conversation short. I've already wasted 25% of my leisure time in this what a conversation, nerd. so. <laughs> Alright, well, yeah, cheers, bud. Yeah, see you later. Good, Good day. Over. And immediately start bickering. Again. Alvara Ilian. Ilian. Is that just I double L E N? I E N. I G E. That's what you'll be doing with me. Big time. And she's the fit. <laughs> she's the fit one. <laughs> Head miss. You don't know? We don't know. You just have a note that says, a come meet me here at this time. Alright, I'll leave a comma there. Alright, cool. We go forth. Thank God. So, I mean, like, do you just have a problem with smart people? All of this is all fucking phony baloney. Whoa, whoa. those are strong feelings. They're, they're just studying to, to get be better. some sort of, what, degree? <laughs> and where are they going to go off? To a higher castle in this town? I mean, maybe. Maybe they're doing it. <laughs> There's a racket game going on nearby. <laughs> look at, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> They're playing... That's great, <laughs> That's great cardio. What's, what's it called in this? Um, is it, so it's, 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 a, it's a racket sport, yeah. but you notice that, had you now drawn your attention over to it, they're doing like um, Mario Tennis like special moves with magic. Whoa. So like the ball looks like it's going to go out of bounds, and then they do something weird with the racket, and the ball was like... Whoosh, it's insane. And flies back over to them. <laughs> that... That's pretty badass. 
I'm, I'm kind of sad that I can't do that. They're hitting a ball. We've killed things in the wild. All right, okay. What's We've saved point? people. They're here well, playing. I don't know if you've saved people. We've <laughs> saved people. I mean, it is a bit of a joke. We, I mean, you've seen Fabisham, like. Thank you, Otto. There's people on the streets. Like, it's pretty. All I'm saying, they should be helping everybody else in the town and not. You know, I mean, look, stunning. maybe maybe it's more of like a help yourself sort of scenario. You know, I help myself. Don't we know it? Well, well, and maybe yeah. they're furthering themselves so that they can help other people. You're making a snap judgment based oh. on appearances. Mm-hmm. Next thing you're gonna say, like we've all got the same 24 hours in a day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. For these people, their day starts at 4 a.m. <laughs> right? Rise and grind. Rise All I'm grind. saying is. Respect the hustle. (laughs) 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 Little fireworks. (laughs) How tight are their shorts they're wearing? Oh, they're kids. (laughs) What the fuck? Oh, are they? Nods. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you go to jail now. They're they're university age. Just safe. Just safe. Thank (laughs) Christ. And that's the end of the stream. Uh, that's on your coat. Outside of their shorts, though. I'm just yeah. thinking if they're making those noises, they whatever sportswear they're wearing must be pretty bad at the same time. <laughs> just athletic shorts. So much judgment right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've come from the streets. I'm not judging this out. <laughs> You've pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. <laughs> Let's just find this woman and get out of there. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sam really confused about it. Looks like the high top today. He's, yeah. He's having a bad one today. It's fine. It's fine. We can get him out of it. Well, uh, maybe. Yeah, that's true. So, you have spent the best part of two weeks with a go traipsing around with these two to other learned and like, like temples and stuff, which are also a bit like what's the word not transparent but with like a veneer you know temples can sometimes be all shiny and great on the front but then behind closed doors it's not always it's a facade yeah that's the word I'm looking for thank mm. you um, so, so I'm you, tired of it then. yeah it's like two Here weeks we go. of just like going around the library and being shushed in libraries and stuff it's not dorks yeah <laughs> boffins <laughs> nerds <laughs> nerd geeks yeah, I'm fed up. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, that's fine. You can be fed up. I just, you know, maybe don't make such a such a deep judgment about certain people. And also, look, just chill out, man. We're all we're all in this together, okay? We almost died, but we didn't. We're alive. We're still here. We keep moving forward, one foot at a time. All right. Don't know where it's gonna go, but if we're doing it together, we're probably gonna be all right. You say so. Yeah, I did. I just did. <laughs> we enter. It's a lovely day as you continue down this lovely summer's day in Faversham. Um, you continue down this gravel path, and it's because of the sense of you've got like no frame of reference. It actually takes you longer than you think to get to this building because it's bigger than and it's further away than you you thought. So you're like, as you keep, you're like, oh, okay. I thought we'd be there in a few moments actually took a little while to get there the door is like three stories high big wooden doors <laughs> to get inside <laughs> <laughs> opens up into a large room uh, think kind of Resident Evil 1 mansion oh don't do that to me man oh, I'm, I'm doing it to you yeah we oh, oh, <laughs> so cor- corridors <laughs> off to left and right Sweeping curved staircase up to a balcony or Ooh. a mezzanine, some might Ooh. say. <laughs> you love French. A word you'd know if you went to this school. Uh, <laughs> with other corridors and stuff. Lots of movement, students running around, all sorts of stuff happening. There is a small desk to the right, situated behind it, is uh, an elderly woman. A woman? With glasses. 
Oh! Oh! oh. oh. I could even go one further. Please. If we really wanted to. Oh yeah, no, we do. We, we do. So really. do. Please, Daddy. Oh. <laughs> this is quality wow. shit for you guys. Oh. This is where the Patreon money is going to go. It's <laughs> less synthetic more hair. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that is. That's quite something. That I'm is, there. Does that it look is, good? Are you here? Are you Where's Dan? Like? Yeah. It's head. me! <laughs> <laughs> I can smell the Werber's originals that she's got in her pocket. <laughs> to say, did we walk into the cafeteria? <laughs> 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 It's got the hairnet bit on it. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You let it, go on, let it loose. Am I meant to take it off? I think so. Let the locks loose. Maybe. Should we look? Should we look together? I feel like it is it's meant to be on there. You think? I don't know. You want to loose Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. George is right. George is right. Wow. Oh. Now, it's not my first oh. day. Oh. Wait, hang on a oh, second. No. So Maybe you had a wig that, that had oh. a hairnet on it. That <laughs> yeah. makes no sense. Why? Why would a wig need a hair? Hey, take it up with wish.com. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> She's got those bangs going on. Yeah. Come on, girl. Get a close up of him. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff right Is there. that looking good? <laughs> that's fantastic. Bit. So, as the. Oh, <laughs> pep, pep, the three of you enter into this chamber and you kind of look around, not knowing where you are, this elderly woman steps up from, with, with considerable effort, steps up from behind this massive ornate desk she has, full of books and papers and, and ink quills. What? Oh, excuse me, what are you doing here? You're not students. We're looking for someone called Olvara Elden. <laughs> oh, everybody looks for her. What, what we've been, proof? We've been asked to be an audience with her. Well, I'm sure you have. Sent from Nor Norik. Give her the just give her the letter. It's probably easier. Yes. You went sent by Norik. No. Oh. You went sent by Norik. There was that? a man there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> she says <laughs> Behind uh, against the rear wall you just walked in, next to the uh, perpendicular to her desk there is a long red Puffy bench with like nice big soft cushions on it, and she just looks at this letter and just waves you over. Take a seat. Cool. She shuffles back round the desk, puts it down, <laughs> takes one set of glasses off, puts another set of glasses on, <laughs> un unrolls this piece of paper, uh, and starts examining it for a few moments. Are you guys doing anything? Um, I'll just be like having a little look around, just that classic, just almost like kicking the dirt, but having a nose. You around. have shoes on. Yeah, of course. Okay. Perfect Daddy's is over. Uh, <laughs> short lived. Yeah, New era. Daddy's short lived. Died. You're in your sh your footwear era now. <laughs> nah. I cut right. the toes off though. <laughs> <laughs> the toes are still out. But... So did you take a seat, or are you, on. or are you looking around? Oh uh, yeah, looking around. Oh okay. Just Fine. Have a little. Uh, yeah, there does seem to be a, like an ebb and a flow. So there was a flow of activity when you first entered. Now you've taken a look and sat down there. There's a, a lull and there's not as many students moving around. I feel like maybe that was a between classes kind of thing. So now it's, it's just the occasional student or other, other academic looking professor of some kind. But otherwise, yeah, if you picture the Resident Evil 1 mansion, that size, that space, the architecture, the ornaments ornaments and statues and that kind of stuff. That's that's the, the room you're in. Did you say that there was like classrooms or offices scattered around the edge? Uh, corridors, corridors that, that just disappear. Oh, okay. Left and right. I was just trying to see if there was like a office of this lady. She's just at a desk like in the front like, oh, sorry, as you come old, into the room. Bar. Oh, okay. To see if you see like a name tag on the door. Or something. And there's no doors from from okay. can see. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll be taking a seat, taking the load off. All right. Take a seat. It's comfy. Um, did you say that we got another item from someone? The stone from Arosh. That's right. Stone. I'm doing it. Stone. <laughs> He's beginning it's to believe. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing it. He's doing the thing. <laughs> Um, Did it have a logo on a it? A small well? stone with the image of a homestead chiselled into one side and gently warms your hands. Could we assume that at some point we would have taken the time? In two to... weeks. Yep. 
<clears throat> Hell yeah. What would that be? Uh, you won't find it on D&D Beyond. It's a, a homebrew item mm-hmm. uh, that basically helps you find your way home. Okay. Any, oh, I guess, any, in anywhere, you can use it and it will guide you home wherever you set home to be. Does it have a name? Um, Homestone. <laughs> no. I, uh, <laughs> f- to be completely trite, we'll just call it a hearthstone for now. I did have a name for it, but... Stone coming. Hearthstone <laughs> <laughs> here is Warcraft. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, I review want that in your possession sure yeah yeah we'll say even in those two weeks maybe on a couple of nights maybe not you but you two might have imbibed a few drinks on your after a hard day of researching and maybe on your stumbling trying to find your way back to the inn you've like tapped the zone and it kind of guides you back towards your inn sick sweet cool what what are you doing then well in here yeah um, just vibing, just vibing. Yeah, big vibing. Yeah, clicking my my toes with my bandaged feet, just clicking it. Are there any yeah. interesting looking oh, people? Where well, you get your this? big toe? Everyone's interesting to you here. Freak. Okay. <laughs> They're all freak. wearing like opulent, long <laughs> trailing cloaks. That, that's and more normal. Interesting bags. That's more normal. Even this lady has got like jewellery on that glistens even in this half sunlight of the interior <laughs> as mentioned you see some people who are older yeah. and aren't wearing like a uniform they're still dressed like academics but they're not in the uniform that all the students are wearing okay. um, who will be making their own way between corridors and rooms I'd say what does anybody nearby look built like they got some muscle mass to them. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably no uh, on-site gym then, I guess. No, it's a shame. I there is. They all look pretty squishy. Yeah, I know, but you can you can be strong up here and strong in here. You know what I'm saying? I think they're just strong on here. Yeah, that's probably true. It's yeah, not a lot going on. Yeah. You heard those guys in the courtyard playing that racket game? Well, you know, I mean... Uh, it's- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's coming in from the other side. It's coming from the old one. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching you. <laughs> I mean, I do have the abs on the show, so... And did you just disappear? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> just a masturbation. <laughs> that's that whole thing. <laughs> Alright, okay. I mean, let's, let's take a second. What do we reckon that this is about? I mean, I, I didn't think that we would have that kind of like... Uh, Reception. I thought this was all going to be underhanded. I mean, yeah, I don't know what you guys got yourselves into before you uh, you left Faversham, but it seems like you're quite the uh, popular fellows. Well, they, they seem to be covering stuff up. I mean, they didn't even say that Cal and Cormac. I don't know if that's necessarily like covering up and more just like not caring. It seems like political bullshit yeah, I mean, crap to me. Would put it past Favisham in general, really. Man, you two are so suspicious of everything here. <laughs> Maybe well, it's because I'm not. From well, think <laughs> that we got hired for this. Think, <laughs> think, <laughs> think, <laughs> think, <laughs> think, <laughs> think, <laughs> think. <laughs> uh, we we got hired for this to kill people that supposedly were making this town worse, well, and then turns did. out they weren't even doing that. They were the good people. At that point you were reminded of the fact that the aide stressed quite heavily that she wished that Norik wished to disassociate himself from the task mm. now put that in the context of what happened when you returned to the city as well weird so, huh weird hmm. right so he didn't expect us to come back I don't think well no because they were going to keep sending people out there anyway and we weren't He's... the first people to go out that way as well. So I feel like maybe... Yeah, but imagine if they'd have come back, you probably would have heard of them. Yeah, it's because they died. We, we, like they told us that they killed them, right? Right? I'm not losing it, am I? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have been they... killed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you only knew that they were killed because you got that one, What? 
The, the woman who like <laughs> sent you off was kind of like. She, bitch. They were like, I don't know. tell anybody about this, and she was also like, oh, we've we've sent other people, and if you don't manage this, we're sent more. Mm. It was only when you met the, the Arosh, Arosh, and that, yeah, that you found out that obviously they'd killed them. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like they were like, oh yeah, people keep dying, but go on your on your pop. Wait, what are we what are we discussing right now? I'm so confused. Are we talking about whether or not they actually wanted us to succeed on this thing? Well, I'm just I'm just saying like we got sent on different uh, under different pretenses that these people were making this town much yeah, worse. Like, yeah, killing and murdering. Yeah, and, yeah, and we got there, and that wasn't even refugees. the case. Yeah, but you're not going to get someone to do something. By being like, could you go sort out these innocent people for us? Like we knew, like I, I mean, I knew that you know it wasn't all on the up and up, but it still seems weird that we've succeeded and then we've come back and now they're like, hey, these guys are great. They did this thing for us when beforehand they were like, don't say that you're doing anything for us. That's what I'm saying. It's just the, the change in the narrative a little. You have to, uh, remind me, you told them that you killed those people, or that you... Yeah, because we, we took something to be like, hey, see, look, we've killed them. Right. Yeah. Right. Because otherwise, they just keep sending people. If we were like, oh, yeah, we let them go, we just we were like, mm, don't do that again. In summary, I don't trust them. Well, yeah, duh. Yeah, I mean, ever since I've uh, found my way of the light, you know, it's... Uh... Fuck Favisham, to be honest, but... Yeah. Um, well, it's only because of fact that I don't have a mate because of Favisham, to be honest, so... <laughs> got no uh, mates. Got no mates. <laughs> hey. Just wait for a mate. Okay. <laughs> hey, come on. You got us. All right. Maybe. The <laughs> old lady... <laughs> she... The DM has a headache now. <laughs> scribbles somewhere. Uh, she's She takes out the ink quill. Scribble with something on a piece of paper. <laughs> it's savages. Do not shut. Uh, and then <laughs> just <heck>. like <laughs> with a flip of, flip of her wrist, a flick of her wrist, <laughs> whoosh, the wrist. just flicks up, <laughs> like not even looking, just flicks it up over her shoulder and it <laughs> disappears, flutters away. And nothing more. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> as we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she pulls out with surprising strength from a drawer in the desk a massive book, a tome. Douche! Plumps it down on her desk, opens it up to using one of those little page leafs that runs down the spine of the book that uses to keep your pager on. <sighs> opens it out. Now, if you could come and sign in, please! Okay. Eleven. <laughs> there is, there is, typical sign in stuff. Name, who you're here to see, what time you've arrived, uh, and uh, like reason for it. Maybe, to maybe we all sign in as one name. Give us a group name. You want to come up with a group name right now? Yeah, um, I feel like this is, this the is sort for of... health and safety, so it has to be. <laughs> group name. I feel like that's maybe the sort of thing we need to discuss. You know. I'm discussing right now. <laughs> He's part of the royal family Doom Belch. Movie God Doom Belch. <laughs> I, I, he seems opposed to writing that down. Maybe I'm sorry, sir, so I've never heard of you. Uh, that's, should should that's I harsh. have? Is it something the younger generation are into? What are you famous for? Wait, actually, now that we know that he's part of a royal family, do either of us know anything about that? <laughs> Influence. <Yeah. laughs> um, Probably not me, because I'm not from the yeah. code. Uh, you can both roll history checks. If you wish, Otto and Slevin, history. Uh, the words. What were the words? The words, the words. Uh, I don't know why, but I gave myself disadvantage. Okay, do it. I'll take it. That's a freebie. <laughs> and do you say history? Yes. Shit. <laughs> Seven. Six. There it is, Otto. Uh, eight. Okay. <laughs> uh, Can I give no. myself guidance? Yes. 
can you give yourself disadvantage? Though? <laughs> yeah. No. When, when you get to Nathan's level, you can. Yeah. I think <laughs> it was just because in my head, because I said that I wasn't from here, yeah. I was expecting you to be like, yeah, disadvantage. <laughs> That's the kind of DM you are. And I, no, it's the kind of DM you are to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the name doesn't ring any bells and hasn't for the last couple of weeks. Nothing's even sprung up in any of the stuff you've been talking about or dealing with in your research. <laughs> Um, however, Norik referred to one of you as a talented polymath known the world over, a physician and a therapist who has come to share their benevolence, uh, and just the noble Doombelch dwarfs. Oh, uh, I don't know why I got the word royal from. Well, they're not too dissimilar. Okay. Well known. Um, <clears throat> but Wait, poly- poly- <laughs> well, polymath. <laughs> What is that? Somebody is that... who is good at a lot of things. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, I know it's like you. you but... Oh yeah, yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> dead boy, dead boy. <laughs> um, there was probably some hyperbole in his speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, okay. Well, if he's not writing his name, I'm right. I'll write Muigor's name down. Okay, just to right. speed this thing up. <laughs> I'll write down Lord Dustin. Cool. There are other entries. Um, so you're not the first people to have visited. Any names of note in the book? None that you recognise on the page that she's opened and you're about halfway down. Okay. okay. No, no point asking. asking I was going to say, was there any others today, but I don't really care. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Oh, any. Sorry, you have to put who, what the reason you're there for. Mm. Is there anyone that's come for Olivara? The lady yeah. with the vulva. Vulva. The vulva. <laughs> I, won't, I won't get you to roll because it's a big book. She's put it out in front of you. You've got time because you're hesitant. You've got time while these guys are standing in front of you to take a look. Uh, yes, there are several entries. Uh, for Ovara, not all of them. A lot of them are names of the people visiting and the people they are meant there to see. You don't recognise any of them, apart from Ovara's name, and now these two's. Um, the most recent entry was maybe like 15 minutes earlier to see Ovara, 15 minutes prior to your arrival now. So the last entry, uh, and all it says is invitation okay hmm. hey, I've just had a thought I'm I'm gonna assume that this is probably because we met that <clears throat> guy I mean yeah he was pretty magical and this is yeah the very magical place to be yep <sighs> somebody's fingers are tingling I can imagine well what do you mean well, is like, that a saying where you're from well no I just made up that's yeah, pretty but, good, actually. I like that. If only we had a lyricist to write it down. I mean, man, man, why you gotta keep they died. bringing the mood down? They died. Yep, we know. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> we saw it. <laughs> At what age did they die? You're like in front of her. You're as close as we are talking about this stuff. So <laughs> as, as you're like leaning over to sign the book. You're talking to me. Yeah, because you said people have <laughs> you died. Told me. And she's she's an, an elderly woman. Death is on her on her brain. Um, <laughs> oh, how much gold did we get, by the way? Uh, after it was like thousands, wasn't it? If memory serves. Two thousand five hundred. Like yeah. Ten thousand. One hundred thousand. <laughs> no deal. Banker says no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got the quarter of a million. Don't yeah. <laughs> how do you know that? Just do. <laughs> feel it in my plums. Uh, there how are you? Uh, must be in my like thirties. And she goes to take your hand across the desk. <laughs> you like, touch back. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, wee. <laughs> don't touch me. She he gets like this. Dick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> man, we've really got to work on your social skills. I man. don't know this woman. Yeah, it's an <laughs> old woman. What? She's not going to stab you. Don't trust anyone. Wrong your stealth, Jack. Son of a bitch. 
Come on, baby. So big. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's very in character. Yeah, she rolled quite highly yeah. on her perception. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't trust anyone here, <laughs> especially <laughs> this old bag. <laughs> <laughs> she just says, after you don't trust anyone here, she just says, Oh, you don't need to worry about anyone here, certainly not me. Uh, as she says that, she just whoosh, whips out her hand and catches a piece of paper that has just reapparated in front. And then, uh, oh yes, uh, apparently you, you are correct. You do have an invitation. Here we go. I think you finished signing in. All signed in. What's your reason for attending? Invitation. <laughs> What he's Ditto, yeah? Yeah. I didn't no, write anything, so... Yes, yeah. <laughs> you must put that down for me. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put that down for him as well. Your invitation? <laughs> yeah. Is he, you've written him. everything for him now. Yeah. yeah. At this point. It's <laughs> like funny for him. Don't you dare. <laughs> Sticky <laughs> bum. <laughs> Chlamydia. <laughs> I love this place. Watch, watch this one. He has chlamydia. <laughs> Moog or Doom Belch. I don't trust anybody. Yeah. <laughs> In brackets. <laughs> Not even this book. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> after you finished... <laughs> uh, after you finished signing it, however you want to sign it, she... Oh, thank you kindly. Holds it back over. Oof. <laughs> Bit of dust flies out, takes it back down, puts it in the jaw. One of the students flittering past. Azias! Azias! Come! Come here! And this just, yeah, bookish boy, uh, like thick-rimmed glasses. Oh, just comes over. Ah. <laughs> back in the room. <laughs> Um, oh, that wig looks very uh, tight. <laughs> Is it a high bar of red? That's the natural fibres. <laughs> the natural fibres in it. It's just, um, don't put any open flames near me, though. <laughs> just, <laughs> fiber. I'm going to go up. Um, she just says, take these, take these to Alvara's office now. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you'll follow me. Lead the way. You following? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this boy starts to lead you through the corridors and tunnels of Renard's Foundation for the Talented. Uh, like he knows it, the back of his hand doesn't enter into idle chit chat with you. In fact, he's got quite a decent pace on because he's been distracted from whatever else he was doing. And you pass corridors um, with doors that you can see they've got glass on that you can see into and there are various school rooms classrooms all in like all colors of the rainbow all shapes and sizes some with desks in rows some with desks in circles some like a war zone like ex explosion marks up the walls most with chalkboards up at the front some are empty some have got students in some you'll be walking down the corridor and there'll be like flashing of lights as you approach and you can see he just kind of shields his eyes as he walks past. Uh, here's some fan service for you all now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, ah. <laughs> there it is. The best kind oh, of fan service. <laughs> um, no, one of the classrooms you pass by that catches none of your eyes in particular. Uh, there is a lecturer at the front, rather dashing tiefling with light purple skin, curly hair and all, all the, the students are at their desks feverishly writing away with an uncanny speed and there's like just writing notes in their books and just flipping it over. You see on the chalkboard behind him lots of symbology of like circles and loops and how you can like bisect the loop and cut a part of the circle out to jump somewhere else. So he's teaching them a lot of <laughs> bullshit. He's, there, is he? he's really handsome. Son he's a, he's he a handsome purple, <laughs> purple tiefling. 
with a bunch of rings. Little oh. picture on his desk of a seafaring captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and uh, lots of maths and equations on the wall behind him. As you see him, I've just mentioned but what not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> Did you see him? <laughs> purple. You get it. <laughs> No offense to anybody that likes the colour purple. Yeah. It doesn't automatically <laughs> no, you're a nonce. <laughs> but just in this world, it does. <laughs> For this character in particular. No. Nope. Yeah. Very yeah. clever wizard teaching them about time. Yes. Who is now canon in this universe. Oh, he lives! God. He lives! Which means everything else is canon as well. That's a, you've opened a dam. No, no. That's a D, that's DM privilege right now. <laughs> I was going to say, is it going to be like a multiverse? No, yeah. no. Are we going to have a crossover event? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Let's fucking go! It's like that uh, Nick Cage movie where they're, they're in the car. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this school <clears throat> boy, he's an adult, school adult. Yeah. Brings each other the corridors. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. I'm a, sc- I'm a school adult. I'm a school, yeah. I'm a school. school adult. Car. I'm a career school adult. <laughs> <laughs> Leads you through the school. <coughs> through the school. Upstairs. Back on yourself. Upstairs. Down. Spinneret towers. Blah, 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 through the building. Eventually leading you away from classrooms. Up to a more. Less well trodden area where there are names on the doors Mughal, you'll be pleased hey. to know and eventually he brings you up to one that doesn't doesn't have glass on the front uh, and he just says, well this is the Alvaras, Provost Alvaras office, so can I barge through the door? <laughs> Damn, it's your game baby I'm a barge through the door you can see the the, the, the school <laughs> adult is just about to, well, this is her office, so I'll just... <laughs> just goes to gently rap on the door, Boom. and you just bowl straight through, yeah? Hell yeah. Okay, he leaps out of the way. Muagor, you bowl into a very pristine, immaculate study, an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, Similar trappings to Hamash's, except not in a deep, dark, dank cave, but out in a nice building somewhere. There are three people in this room that you have barged into, (laughs) who were in a discussion that you have interrupted. Don't care. (laughs) No, don't don't care. Don't care. (laughs) Give me plot. Story. <laughs> Story. <laughs> We're speed running this. Yeah. <laughs> there is another like astrolabe globe thing. There are bookshelves align both sides of the wall. There is another huge ornate desk. Behind the desk, there is lovely massive windows uh, that look out onto the rear gardens of the school. <laughs> so lots of sunlight coming in. Nice view outside. She's got an external facing office. Oh. Yeah, that that's corner. what you that want. That corner office. That's what yeah, you, you want. Need. That corner yeah. office. <laughs> uh, it's very high ceilings as well. So books oh, go all, all the way up, floor to ceiling. Imagine the high ceiling. Yeah. Imagine singing in there. Mm. Try it. <laughs> I will show you who you see behind. Oh, behind the desk. Oh my god. <sighs> Sitting behind the desk. Oh my god! Why did you arrest me? What did you do? Do? Is a white haired elven lady. Oh, I'm about to get the dogs out. <laughs> wearing subtle but subtly expensive. So it's not like branded stuff that you get now. What is it? It's like. Something like Adidas. It's like it's wealth is silence or something like that is the f- phrase. Uh, so yeah, it's not like Gucci and stuff, but you can tell like on closer detail the stitching is like golden thread. The velvet! And it is, <laughs> it is high quality. But yeah. Blouse. She seems to have a coat draped over her chair behind her. Obviously, very attractive. Of course. Elven, late, timeless. You have no idea how old she is. She could be 20 or 200. You have no reference. Just very nice, attractive attire. 
You see, leaning up, uh, kind of parallel with her desk, leaning up against a bookshelf, one leg up on one of the shelves, wearing a big duster trench coat, wide-brimmed hat Ooh. that the pair of you may notice. Oh, I'll shank this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> Yeah, we spotted him during the uh, oh, the right. speech. Yeah, we did. So you two recognise him, although you don't. Another elf. We can tell the ears sticking through the hat. Also mm. looks like a nonce. <laughs> so many nonces. <laughs> Who just as Moogle, you fly into the room. In fact, I can do you one better. Whoa! <laughs> just. Pushes up the peak of his hat, which has got loads of other hair. So small. <laughs> yeah, it's very small. His hat. Pushes up the peak of his hat that he was kind of like, you know, like a film noir yeah. kind of thing. Just pushes up his peak to take a look at you. And he's just got like, uh, like dragon chess pieces in his hands that he's just like running through his fingers as you enter the room. Long coat, lots of leather straps. Signs of wear and tear on the jacket. And the other person kind of in between where you've just barged in, in between you and presumably Olvara, mm. is another person who looks like... So, Hello, you guys, guys will see before you a <clears throat> purple skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet you feel like an idiot now, don't you? <laughs> nah. Uh, <laughs> Nods. But for all, the, for all the, you know, reasons you'd assume, Elven is, for those of you that might know better, you might think otherwise because of the skin colour. I'm so confused. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, they've got short back and sides, white hair, kind of nice little quiff kind of set up here. Very nicely groomed hair. Handsome, quite chiselled. Again, the elven ears, you don't know how old they are. They could be 20, could be 200. You don't know. They've got a They're white... 220. They're 220. <laughs> <laughs> they've got a white loose fitting shirt underneath. Uh, purple pauldrons with gold detailing on, leather armour, uh, purple gauntlets as well with gold detailing to them. And uh, yeah, they kind of just look to the door as well hmm. with a face of inquisitiveness. I have shared oh the third and final image. Here they are. <gasps> He's cool. He's cool, man. Damn. She's, she's getting hot. So, Mugos dived into the room. You guys can't get a good look because his stout stature has obscured your view into the room uh, as you've kind of taken a few steps in and you've been with three people who have all just turned to, <laughs> to face you. Uh, what do you two do from the outside? The boy just says, uh, oh, Sorry, Provost Alvara. Uh, and he's like, I'm getting out of this situation. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm getting out of here. Wait, 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 before you go, um, his, have, a, have a goal. For, for getting us up here. That's much appreciated. It's really, thank you. You took time out of your day to get us here. I appreciate it. Looks very confused. Takes it nonetheless. Scarpers. Hey, student loans, man. <laughs> Ain't no joke. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't think he was paying for anything. Hey, well, you never know. Okay, look, what we're talking about, don't make judgment. Yeah, but not, nothing. Let's just get inside before he fucks it up. <laughs> yeah. There's an awkward silence in the room. Just two are just mumbling outside. Yeah, waiting for that scene to end. Yeah. <laughs> just cut scene, just pause. Uh, would I refer to Avara as Professor or would I refer uh, to her as Avara? What would I what would be my uh, Mummy? Let me just check. <laughs> Please. That's what I want to refer to her as. Gosh my head. Is it like, is there a She level? is a provost. Provost. Uh, and so for your benefit, you, as mentioned, you've only been in the room maybe five, ten minutes tops prior, and it has just been pleasantries, thank you for coming, do you want any refreshments? Um, I've invited you here because of your interest in stuff. Okay, so I don't have like a background in this place. No, I'm not a no, you, right you, now, you two received a similar invitation due to the things that you have been looking into cool. uh, so yeah you had you unbeknownst to you but you did receive a very similar letter hence the last entry on the attendance record entering the building uh, yes you haven't really got into any nitty gritty details yet uh, in fact Olvara has said we were waiting for more people 
More people doth have arrived. Oh, and as, uh, as, as you were saying, more people have arrived. <laughs> what an interesting fellow. Which one of you is Alvara? That's not me. I, I would just like to <laughs> guess that. First much. of all, hello. Hi, how are you? S- sorry about that. Oh. I mean, this is off to a great start. <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, no, right. Great way to make an entrance. Yeah. As Muruka was barged in, uh, <laughs> the male elf leaning against with the, with the hat has kind of stepped forward, put his hands in his pockets and taken a step towards you just as you peek, peek your head in and... Uh, Come here! <laughs> <laughs> also, we're like... He's not. He's not stepped. He's just taking a step forward. He's no, stepping, it's a big room. Is he stepping onto Muigor? Yeah, he's now like in his face. <laughs> Mate, he's back, back up because he's rolling the shit. Uh, <laughs> we all kill each other. How, how far away from? Like here, fifteen foot. It's a massive. Like he's a, okay. she's got a nice room. All I was just gonna say is he just like holds his position. Just, you know, doesn't well, doesn't well, flinch. It, it probably seems even bigger to you because you're such. You're half a man. So. I'm not <laughs> half a man! <laughs> I'm gonna blow this room! <laughs> You're gonna blow the room? Yeah. <laughs> ah. uh, as he does that, you can see Olvara behind, just still sat down. You can see she's pushed back away from the desk a little bit and at an angle in her chair, legs crossed, just the tip of one of her knees appearing over the, the top of the, the table. Just. Waves him, waves him down. He just leans back, leans back up against the uh, cool dude. the uh, bookshelf, hands out his pockets and crosses his arms and just watches the rest of you enter. Probably smokes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, cool. <laughs> I'll say again, which one of you is Alvaro? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> And she just says, point, "Just to wait outside the room." Yeah, like, yeah. Not, not with him. Not we're not with him. him. <laughs> <laughs> we arrived right separately. Just the coincidence that we're here at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> she <coughs> speaks to the elf leaning against the bookshelf. Is Obviously, he a elf on a shelf. He is an elf on a shelf. <laughs> and that's it. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks to the elf on the shelf, uh, but not quietly. <laughs> <laughs> but she's obviously speaking to him and just says I'm beginning to doubt <coughs> our decision <laughs> she's, she's saying that about him not us you, you're not including me in that are you? no you've been rather pleasant so far oh, thank you I am too I presume that's Slevin and Otto outside if you'd like to yeah. Enter. Hello. Hello. Close the door gently. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. We can, we can close things gently. Oh, that's just like him knock like, on the open door. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. banging against the hinge <laughs> yeah. still. Just as that like swag like my wife thing. Legs just spinning. Um, are just we try and, like, doing in? Uh, these these are these are coming into the room. Okay. So. Well, uh, I don't mind leading intro. I'm Rizal. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice in- Introductions are, are welcome. Uh, Rizal. Nice Mark. Mark! Nice Riz- Mark! Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> We're having a crossover of it. It's happening. Deep. Slap him, he's in too deep. <laughs> uh, yes, you heard me correctly, it's Rizal. Rizal, okay. Yes. That's, that's, that's a great name. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, Riz for sure. Slevin. Ah, nice name. Don't know why I'd think about that. It's okay. Yeah, social situations, you know. These things happen. Social anxiety, it's no joke. We're Favisham's finest. Uh, being invited to come up here. He but... doesn't speak for all of us before Ooh. he goes any further. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's kind of like, a, he's like a rogue. And we just kind of <laughs> look quite keep boxy for that kind of build. I've, we've been through some shit. We're here. We just want to, I, I just want to get things done, you know. In- Pragmatic. Indeed, yes. That is a, yeah. I, I admire that. Mm. More people like that sometimes, we need them. I like this guy, I like this guy. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> what, 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 what is this? What's, yeah. what's going on here? <laughs> I'll, I'll point towards the, the lady with her knee out. Yes. <laughs> uh, to, <laughs> I, I, I assume we've all received letters from you. In the brief moment of silence between her your question and her response, you just hear the dragon chess pieces in this, this other elf's hands. 
like gently knocking together. She it's says, loud. "Because it's a quiet room. <laughs> it's not <laughs> clicking his toes. <laughs> Fucking freak! I'm not doing that anymore. Snap, snap, snap." <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing a friendship bracelet? Uh, no. That's free real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I've learnt my lesson, I ain't bothered with that shit. Sure. <laughs> Imagine that, like, the onslaught. Someone barges into the room and then suddenly this guy comes, take this bracelet, take this bracelet. Grabbing your ears. I haven't had time to buy more. <laughs> uh, did you close the door behind you? Yes. Good. Gently, I hope. Yes. Yes, good. Um, <laughs> Olvara has a number of stuff on her desk half the shit makes no sense to you half of it looks like documentation a lot of stamps and seals and that kind of stuff just paperwork she has to do as the provost um, there is a couple of magical items that look like magical items uh, everyone roll me an arcana check you son of a bitch <laughs> Natural 20. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> the, the woman downstairs. Yeah, that's the one. 18 from me. Okay. 18 from me as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four! Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Someone had to be. Yeah. Just... I get you like that. It's normally me. Rizal? Oh, 18. 18. Is that three? And um, what was it, Otto? Four. Four. That's the one that wasn't like the others. Um, okay. Um, so for the two of you, Rizal and Muagor, you see to her hand, quite close to, you know, it's on the, you know, when you're trying to do your desk ergonomically and you have all your bits that you use to, to your right or to your dominant hand, she has to her dominant hand, a rather large glass crystal orb that is definitely very magical and is very important to get and sees frequent use Otto nothing that would help you save your friend don't give a shit move on <laughs> shit <laughs> that's fair that's fair uh, Slevin from the your past life as in like four weeks ago mm. uh, and the work you were doing training and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you would have seen somebody uh, others higher up in both previous organisations mm. use something similar to view things that are far away. Ah. People in places that aren't you're the room you're in. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. <clears throat> Damn. So, she says, uh, well, thank you all for coming. Can I offer any refreshments at all? Well, I won't be rude. I'll have a wine if you've got one. She just... Waves a wrist, a decanter on her desk just fills up a glass. A drawer opens from the some of the bookshelves have got long those like archivist drawers underneath them. Just opens Fantasia style. A flute just whoosh, flies out to the front of her desk. The jug just easily glug, 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 fills it up with wine. Only beer. Yes. Uh, another glass comes out, more like a, not a tankard, but like a tumbler, and the same goblet moves over, beer falls out of it. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm all good. I don't need it. No, thank you for the order. <clears throat> Chicken bake. Chicken bake. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay clear. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for coming. I believe the three of you at least have some stories to tell. We've indeed seen quite a unusual uh, things in the, the recent times. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a lot of bullshit. A lot of undead. A lot of, uh... Oh, just so many undead. Like, un unhealthy. And you can see she's just, just. Oh, we should probably start telling you about it, right? <laughs> Stony-eyed, uh, as she's listening to you all, she says, uh, 
as my report suggested, before we go any further, I'm going to cast a spell on you. Do I have your consent? You already have. <laughs> What's the spell? <laughs> what is it? You will be compelled to tell the truth when you speak. Yeah, but what if we don't want to? Then your only choice is not to speak, and our relationship will be short-lived. It's like most of my relationships. I would have to die. Oh, of course. Uh, you can see uh, a s- circle of energy, like golden light, just starts to like someone's drawing. With I cast counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> She's the leader of an academic school <laughs> of wizards. Level one. <laughs> Count that. <laughs> she just looks at you. It dispels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have that. It starts to glitter around and when it hits the bookshelves on the side it like goes up and starts to you know like if you're drawing a 3D sphere in a video game or something it's cross-sectioned across the bookshelves and begins to encircle you she is of course casting Zone of Truth you can make a save or you can choose to fail I'll fail I've got nothing to hide I fail <laughs> fail yeah oh oh Ooh. here he is Go on, big boy. Um... <laughs> I'll try and resist. <laughs> Fuck it, why Char- not? Charisma saving three. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Do they know Pretty that good. you tried to... Yeah. Well, they know if you pass or fail, and she could probably tell if you've... 17. <laughs> <laughs> 17. Um, you try as you might, but you see. Actually, for the three of you, you you do see, like, and the two of you that have been travelling with him for a bit, you see Slevin like tense, almost imperceptibly. You wouldn't know if you didn't. You weren't familiar with Slevin. You probably don't. For you, are just like, okay, what's happening here? Mm-hmm. But you two do notice Slevin. He's he's trying. Winces just just a little bit. Ovara, <laughs> nothing, not a flicker <laughs> across her face. Just as she catches eyes with each other, when he lingers ever so slightly longer on Slevin. Before turning back to the room. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just one bead of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apologies for the interruption you were saying about the undead that you've seen. Uh, yeah, we were, you know, up in uh, the desert and um, some uh, crazy, uh, I guess you could call him a guy, appeared. Um, could you describe it? He had a fiery stallion and yeah it's like very much like a rabbit dash yep <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually more than point in the other time. <laughs> yeah, you're right you're right the students are spending a lot of time on their scribes <laughs> <laughs> trying to catch such creatures I'm yeah. not familiar with it myself but <laughs> uh, very corpse like and you're dead often are uh just a nasty piece of work and we've lost two of our heart because of him yeah. or it bold head dark pitted eyes and he was saying he was spitting some mad stuff about like how he's already gotten something and things are already in motion and there's no way we could stop him that's a, a big talker big talker hmm uh, again the other half just head down just Seemingly just looking at his hands. On his phone? Yeah. <laughs> On his phone. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Shee! <Yeah>. So shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I need more candy, whatever it is. <laughs> Never played it. Um, Too cool. Not, not, he's not actively participating in the conversation. She is listening to the words you say. I'm just nodding as you go through. Yes, yes, quite that matches the research that we've been doing and uh, Riz Al mm. yes F- for the Riz right yeah uh, that's how I'm gonna lock it in <laughs> can we call you uh, Riz for short or... no what about Rizla <laughs> no zigzag King no. Riz <laughs> I don't know what that is Dr. Riz <laughs> what is Riz if we could go Brilliant. back to the <laughs> I have put quite substantial faith in this group of individuals and I'd don't want that faith misplaced oh wait yeah why did you do that 
You are one of the few people who have met this creature and lived to tell the tale. Oh, yeah, that we are pretty good at that. Shake and bake, <laughs> shake and bake and little man. <laughs> I'm going to blow this roof off. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't let them belittle your stature. I try not to. Let's see what you did there. <laughs> She in on it as well. She's not. <laughs> Un- unlike me, did, did you she just was. Say be little? <laughs> she was straight with it. This is a setup. <laughs> this is actually just. Welcome to the roast of Mugo, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you got me here. so sure. <laughs> I know you have power within you. Yeah, I've killed a lot of things in the time I've been doing this. With these people, I've just been thrown together. I ain't meant to be here. Well, I mean, you know, see, these people, we're pretty close now. We've spent a few weeks together, been through a lot. As I said, we've lost two of our friends. I'm just fed up being passed over to the next person, the next person. Are you here to help us? Or do you want help from you say, us? You say you, uh, you, know, you, you know this creature? You say I consider myself learned on a number of people of interest, let's say. Indeed, the four of you are somewhere on that list. This creature that you speak is rather higher. I hope you don't mind me asking, why am I here? (laughs) From what my associate, and she gestures to the elf, (coughs) tells me, you have a rather unique upbringing, shall we say, that actually puts you in a rather advantageous position for things we'll be discussing in a moment. Proceed. And of course, a particular set of skills, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) That no one knows yet. You're Liam Neeson. I am. I am, I knew it. I will kill you. I will find you, I will kill you. Parents not dead, but they have been Taken. <laughs> no, <laughs> take three from me. <laughs> so she says, uh, Oh no, I'm not here to help you. Quite the opposite. It is I who require your assistance. We Which is. Is. You all spoke at once. <laughs> Which is. <laughs> <laughs> The elf sniggers at this interaction under his under his cap, big collar up. So I didn't quite catch your uh, your name. He looks up at Olvara for a second because <coughs> we don't know who this is. There he is. Yeah. Uh, he's in the room now. Something <laughs> not as cool. Tight. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so cool. Cool. <laughs> he looks up at Olvara who. Gestures thusly. Well, I'm Carb. Not quite a pleasure to meet y'all just yet, but perhaps we'll get there. Carb? Carb? As in like carbs? Carb. Mr. (laughs) Cop. But with a single B. (laughs) I'm familiar with the the novel. (laughs) It's it's serious. (laughs) It's kind of (laughs) baby. (laughs) <laughs> Those wormholes. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, pleased to meet you, Carb. It is a pleasure. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not so, but sure. And no offense. These are the first words that you said, so, like, it's kind of hard to gauge someone. Alvara oh, jumps in immediately and just says, Carb is one of my many associates, a uh, handyman. Let's say. <laughs> Friend zone. <laughs> Single tear. <laughs> He's helped me find you individuals. And we've been doing a bit of research on this creature that you've seen. Have you encountered him before? Not personally, no. Although I am aware of their history. Do tell. It all started in 15 minutes time. Oh, that's that's where we're going to take a break. He's good. (laughs) (laughs) I got you. 
Hang on, I just got to go back and look at her one more time. Oh, I've had her. No, not this guy. She's in there. She's in the uh, in the journals. You got it. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I will marry her. <laughs> <laughs> she will be mine. <laughs> uh, right, we will take a short fifteen-minute break. There, those on the stream, go and walk about, stretch your legs, have some water. Do yeah, do some stretching, get some fresh air. Touch them toes. Touch them toes. I'm gonna try this time to touch, like to touch mine. Next time, baby. <laughs> those listening in the podcast will be right. Back. Oh, that was a big delay there. Back. <laughs> <laughs> He's welcome back. I hope those that have been with us on the stream, hello, uh, refreshed and re-energised as much as we are. We pick back up in Provost Olvara's office in the RFT, the Renath's Foundation for the Talented, a prestigious wizarding school in Faversham. At the invite of Olvara, the four of you have been summoned to discuss some matters around the creature the three of you saw in the Oryx Desert. <coughs> what did you ask Mogor? You asked something of her before the break. Uh, if she could tell have us. You, you met, have you met this creature? Yeah. No, not personally. And um, you've done research. So you're gonna regale us with. Indeed. <coughs> so her assistant, Cobb, still remains there and she says yes well it's a duty of my position to keep abreast of certain <sighs> things <sighs> we were beginning to hear rumours of sightings of such a otherwise mythical creature around the world and it correlates with some other readings that I've been doing. I have a finger on the pulse of the world, as it were, and I pick up murmurs and vibrations in the, the material that makes up existence, shall we say. The arcana that infuses the world, the air you breathe, the, the drinks that you drink. And these two factors, the possible sightings and these vibrations in the immaterium, correlated. So, I've begun to do a little digging, and she kind of gestures to her, you know, just the books in her room are bigger than some of the libraries that the three of you attended in your two weeks. Just this one room that you're in has more content than some of these three rooms that you've been, certainly more than you've ever been privy to, uh, Rizal. <clears throat> so yes, I did some investigating and uh, there does appear to be a bit of a history with this city and let's just say spurned individuals many years ago there was a um, mystical aid to the Marquess at the time uh, several centuries ago now, while most of the information has been redacted from that time, deliberately so, one would assume, knowing how our current Marquess works, it would seem to suggest that the mystical aid at that time was made redundant, let's say, from their position. A, a, a disagreement in philosophies, I believe, is probably the, the politically correct term to use. And this aid was dissatisfied with that decision of the Marquess at the time. Now, we have locked away here their last known musings. It's a bit of a chilling read. You can grab it on the way out if you think it will be useful. But I have reason to believe that the aid of that time went on a path of revenge, unfortunately. One that always leads nowhere good. As I'm sure you'll all agree with. Mm -hmm. Stand under the zone of truth, I might add. <laughs> I agree. That's what, that was me agreeing. <clears throat> so, let's bring us back to the present day, shall we? 
I've enlisted the help of Cobb here <clears throat> to investigate some of these rumours, these murmurings, these vibrations in the immaterium that my sources and researchers have identified. One would suggest to be in the desert from whence you have returned. Others would be situated around the globe. Some indeed under the very crust of the earth that we walk upon daily. If my assumptions are to be correct, this creature is after these murmurings, these vibrations. You haven't quite elucidated me on what you found in the desert. Or perhaps, in this case, what you didn't find. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, this uh, Hamash guy, he had something that was... Uh, I think that guy wanted. And he took it, I would assume. Because it wasn't there. So that would make sense, right? Right. That yeah. makes sense, right? I'll okay. get the book out of the... Book out of the bag. And... Uh, <laughs> Just be like, yeah, we uh, we think it could be potentially one of these items here. Can kind of just flick across and she offers a hand. You give it to her. Yeah. <clears throat> she takes it from you. Uh, she says, "Ah, oh, Jenkins, second edition. Hmm, a little bit lacking, but that's fine." And is flicking through for the pages. Uh, and then she just says. Would it? Would you mind if I kept this? Oh, we, we probably haven't got much use for it. You know a lot more about this sort of thing. Excellent. She folds it up. Unless you're uh, helping her. <laughs> <laughs> and just pushes it to one side of her desk. Shuffles in her chair a little bit. So, this creature, I believe, is after things similar to that you'd find in a book like this. I fear, and that is a term I don't use lightly, that were it to continue to acquire such artifacts, it would be a very ill omen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, can you just use that orb on your desk and just find out where he is and then send people to just go and kill him? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I would probably do. You're halfway right, which is the least I can expect for people of your background. Thank you. I w probably will be sending you to go and kill it. Ooh. Us. You barely survived the last time. He's got poison. It pains me to say you have the most experience with the creature. The experience we're getting our butts kicked. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, perhaps this will clarify matters. Uh, Cobb, if you'd be so kind. Just comes out and attacks you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And he steps forward. Oh, and oh my opens God. his duster. Oh. The props. And brings out uh, a little <laughs> scroll. And seeing as you were asking, he makes his way across wow. the room and hands you a scroll. And then Sigh. returns <laughs> to himself. <clears throat> returns oh. to his position. And Ulvara says, that's a mixture of mine and Cobb's notes on these aforementioned murmurs and rumours and rumblings of arcane power. I can see why I'm involved, though. Indeed. Mm. You're like getting a good look at that, <laughs> I was going to say, I like to think. <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah, 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 just yeah. pads in from the side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you actually... I would say so, yeah. i am like, take a look, friend. Oh, yeah, sorry about him. As it's fine, we're all involved in this now. As Cobb makes his way over yeah. to Riz, Al... Yeah. Uh, Rizaki, um, what'd you call it? Boy D. Hey! As it was written. 
Uh, can I try and spot if he's got anything on him? Yeah, you can roll. Any yeah. like weapons or anything like that? Uh, actually, you don't need to roll because he's not being discreet. He he's packing, like as he brings open he's, his. It's like slapping from five yeah. to five. <laughs> as, he, as he opens his trench coat to procure this scroll, he has got daggers like and a big scabbard down there. So it seems like he would be more of like a, a melee type person as opposed to a. Just from a glance. Uh, let's say, yeah. I mean, you can roll me insight because you guys like rolling dice. <laughs> it's yeah. said with such contempt. <laughs> you kids <laughs> like rolling dice. I'm just yeah. doing it to keep you happy, really. <laughs> <laughs> Let them play with their little hand rollies. Yeah, clicky oh. packs. Uh, it's not a one. It's still not great. Uh, insight, did you say? Yes. Nine. Okay. Uh. He definitely has a physicality about him. There is, he walks with confidence, uh, that trench coat, which somebody might wear to conceal a diminutive frame. Not for Cobb, he is, he fills that out. Uh, the straps and, of, and leather armor and whatnot underneath are, you know, at the seams almost. And yeah, he's carrying a lot of like, iron and silver under there. So yeah, he's... Okay. <clears throat> he can he can definitely hold himself in a fight a brawl for it's, sure. It's more just to get an idea of like if if they're investigating this if if the, she's got someone looking into it who is like a melee type person that makes me Slevin feel better about being asked to do this as well because you know he's he did a lot of magic and I don't do any of that. He's so. a handyman. He's, Understood. I know what you're made. I know what you're, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Uh, so as uh, Rizal is taking a look and Cobb returns to his side, he gets out of dragon chess pieces again. Uh, yes, they're a combination of mine and, and Cobb's notes, my, my th- theories on certain items, let's say, or remnants. And Cobb has added in his inimitable notes and thoughts on the matters from the field, let's say, when he's done some research on the matter. But these, I believe, are to be a set of artifacts that could hold power that this creature wants. Hmm. Cool. Alright. Seems like a pretty pressing matter, and... uh... I mean, I don't have the means of faster than light travel myself. Will you be aiding us in our efforts to get around the globe? Um, <clears throat> she says, uh, I don't think that'll be necessary if my theory on this creature is to be true. They will act on a longer time than you might other think, otherwise think is pertinent. Which is to say, you'll have time. Yeah. Okay. I understand then that your interactions with this creature weren't positive, shall we say? Nope. Two people died. Yep. He was uh, all whole. Yeah. That geezer was pretty uh, powerful. Let me let me put it another way for you. How did the what was their demeanor? Wait. What? Who? Very cocky. Mm. Yeah, he looks uh, pretty, oh, uh, he was acting pretty manic. Yeah, so, uh, oh, but he looked ill. Looked pretty, like emaciated. He did say that he'd already done something that he was in the desert to do. Didn't he? Well, well yes, yeah, yeah, it was probably the, get the item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did it. We we established that <clears throat> about three and a half minutes ago. But yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you seem pretty happy about it. Cocky, manic, any other adjectives you would use to describe this creature? Asshole. Right, any of value? <laughs> <laughs> Major asshole. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Well, not very much to go on, but cocky and manic would align with the, the creature that I believe this is and that 
with that cockiness. Some, some might say arrogance. Those with a increased vernacular might say arrogance. And Rizal, with a creature with such arrogance, won't be in a rush mm. to procure these items. In fact, they'll perceive them as already procured. In fact. Hmm. Okay, right. So, do you have any leads on where we should you have start? them in your hand right now? I'm there. Not, I'm not you sure. just oh, looked I mean, at that, it. You didn't even it's, read it. It's a lot of words, you know. Basically, these are all locations that we can now go to. Is there it's one that's close? Yeah, I, I wasn't barring you from going to any of these locations before. <laughs> oh no, you just didn't seem interested to even yeah, do some research in it. I mean, right, well first of all, hang on a second, we've been pulled in part way through this. They're the ones that's already done the research. And second of all, it's just, I look at a page with a lot of words on it and it all starts to get blurry, I get a headache, I start to sweat, but only from my palms. And it's just too much for me. I uh, don't care about any of that. Uh, one of these... <laughs> That right there, that's why we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> One of these locations I cannot go back to. Well, well that's, that's quite the deal breaker. <laughs> what, uh, why can't you go back to It's my hometown. What's wrong with it? I told you. Did you? A couple of weeks ago. No, I think you what? told the other two and I came over and I laughed after. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's <laughs> why I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what did you read? Mm-hmm. The world map in the journal. Uh, there is indeed. Yeah. Uh, can't find it. Uh, it's just maps. Should be under the root maps world map. I mean, look, we could just in between the two squares. We could go back to your hometown and just put like a scarf around your face. Yeah. You could borrow some bandages. <laughs> we are now not in use as much. Oh no, my whole uh, face is covered again. They're fresh. So. No, you don't have it for some reason. I've got it. I just, oh, I don't know why you're not. You, you, you haven't even got it. I ain't got no. no it should be on the gear. Yeah, well, if there's one in your hometown, that's that's pretty close. It would say nice just heading it right there. I left on very, well, I was forced to leave. Very bad pretenses. There you go. Thank you. Well, it's going to be very <laughs> difficult for me to go back there. Do you know what? <clears throat> the best way to face trauma is to face it head on with a good support network around you. And that's what you got with me and Otto. This guy's here too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it, if it helps, friend, I don't really want to visit one of the places on here either, but looks like we You're are. You're going to have to. Yeah. Nobody wants to go anywhere these days. Oh, oh but I'm willing. I'll do it. You're willing. Destiny often asks asks difficult (laughs) questions of us and demands of us more than we would like to give. That is the nature of this world. I don't like this trip. I do not like this trip. Well, why don't we start somewhere, maybe not nearest, but certainly prettiest? Do you want me to go through some of them in detail? Please. Alvara says, uh, for those of you who uh, do not wish to read or may be incapable of reading, I appreciate that. Perhaps I'll. I'll For some people, it's not a choice. Okay. You dumb dumb. (laughs) You short short. (laughs) (laughs) You have worse manners than the least behaved students at this academy. Yeah, but we managed to survive fighting some big undead guys, so... 50% of you managed one. to survive, I gather. Well, that's you kind of need us as well, don't you? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to wish I didn't. <laughs> so, Ballroom is the, the first of the list. Uh, one of the closer ones to the north, not far. I imagine if you've travelled to the desert, you would have... Gone rather close to it. That your hometown. Is the, that is the place I do not want to go back to. And oh. you're what, barred from entry, or? I was told to never step foot in that town ever again by my own father. So oh, uh, so familiar or matter, so it's not so we, we disguise you? Yeah, put, put some bandages on you. There you go. Mm. Make it sound so trivial. I mean, it, it kind of sounds like it is. Have you still got the bandages all over your face and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That's not, got the yeah. mouth agape? No. Nah. Oh, that was just that was just a little tease, mate. Just a little tease. Just a little it. crumb. 
Riz okay. takes a little moment just to <clears> think <throat> over. Well, I'm telling you, no matter what we do, it's not going to work, I'm sure. But if we have to go there, we have to go there. Such a negative net. What were the other ones? <laughs> what was the one that began with C? <laughs> <laughs> the next one on the list. <laughs> a lot of my more sensitive equipment, measuring the immaterium, the arcane energy that infuses the world, their test samples, their um, test groups have begun to waver for the first time in several decades. Something is fundamentally wrong with the world. I don't know what or, or where, but Cobb appears to have done some research on this one, so I'll leave that to his. There were rumours of the Prime Movers, of course, but I don't know how much of that to believe. What are Prime Movers? I'll go through the list first. <laughs> um, I feel like if I tell you too much, you might get overloaded. Hang on a second, you're talking about manners and you ain't gonna look at someone when you're gonna like talk to them. That's rude. I think would you rather go back to bickering? Maybe I'll continue. Kerdor, <laughs> <laughs> a short several days ride to the east of Faversham, at least on this continent. Uh, a significant mixed settlement, according to Cobb. Um, Naces are apparently there. Yes, ma'am. Maybe perhaps they have forgot something to do with it, but yes, yeah, something is definitely occurring there that was not there in the past. Initial telemetry, conflag conflagration vivacities, fewer planar crossings, I'm sure you will know what that means. Uh, There's a lot of big words. Vesk, uh, several days' journey to the west of Faversham. The peasant settlement, although Cobb says I shouldn't call them that. Again, anomalous readings. Uh, unlikely that that would be natural. It's a small, lower socio-economic settlement of predominantly humans. Very unlikely to have magical artifacts of power. Okay, I mean, was there anywhere that had like a bigger reading? Like you looked at it with your... With your and you were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. What, how, so how, how, do you, how do you find how do you define bigger reading in this context um, I mean look right. as someone that doesn't do the magic I would just say that maybe it's somewhere that gives you a bigger tingle than another place quite the underdark <laughs> shooting not to respond <laughs> Uh, the Underdark, for those who aren't aware, a subterranean network of caverns and tunnels under ground. The Dark, yeah. Yes, that's the, the common name for it. Um, there are tremors have increased, and Cobb reports more raids from the bloodied city, which is never a good sign in of itself. He is showing reluctance to go anywhere near that place, though. You got that damn straight, man. Elisari, how could we forget my hometown, which I am very welcome to return to. <clears throat> that seemed fuck? unnecessary. Incredible bursts of arcane energy. If that qualifies as your tingles, then perhaps that so be it. I mean, it sounded like you just said exactly what I was asking for earlier, so I don't know why you had to be all snippy about it. I think we all need to tone it down a little. She's quite a powerful woman. <laughs> so powerful she Thank needs you. us. <laughs> and, uh. Ray of Death. Movie Gore goes to jump. Just throws the land. Power of friendship. <laughs> And of course, uh, I think it's the, <laughs> that area of the world is colloquially known as the Forerunner Calamity. Uh, it's just a, a barren wasteland now filled with mechanical humanoid corpses is probably the best descriptor of them. 
but there's um, been no academic yeah. research there in quite some time. However, the energy readings seem to suggest some kind of temporal disturbance. See, now, the way that I'm looking at this, right, is we either go for somewhere that's really close so that we can get the quick shot, just knock it off the list, or we go to the uh, Elisari with the the big stuff, energy, mm. and we do that. I was going to say as well, it's uh, probably the nicest of the locations we can visit. I mean, does it really matter if it looks nice? It might ease us into getting to know each other and working together. We have also been in the desert for a, we were in the desert for a little while. It might be nice to go somewhere a bit. Yeah. yeah, but then we were also on a boat. We'll probably have to be on a boat again. I vote the nicer area. Change the scenery. Yeah, you just don't want to deal with stuff. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I believe we're all running from something. I'm not. Insight check. <laughs> Why don't you show me? So the truth is actually wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> also in the room. <laughs> you see, Slevin mum- mumble his words, mm. attempt to say something. Mm. What, what was that? Sorry. Um, look, all I'm saying is, is that. You gotta deal with it at some point, you know? Mm. It's like ripping off a band aid. You just gotta get it done. Trend you're covered in bandages. <laughs> exactly, I know a thing about it. <laughs> also, bandages are slightly different to a band aid. Duh. Wow. <laughs> Quite the talk. <laughs> let, me, let me assist your decision making process here. Now, as mentioned, ideally we would like to hit as many of these as possible. And while well, there was no pressing time matter, this creature is after whatever lies in these locations, so I would assume the order of their completion may impact how events play out. I have a limited foresight in these matters. To aid your decision making, aside from, well, Cobb, you, you mentioned here some poor bastard, if you'll excuse my language there crass than I'm used to. Uh, where would he be? Well, he's just down in the in the ducks of this fair city, milady. Oh, apparently there's somebody that close by who may assist you there with the prime movers. Of course, a perfect segue onto those. A sect of gnomes many, many, many years ago, several centuries ago, rumoured to be after the unobtainable, in pursuit of perfection. Obviously, we know now is an impossible feat. <laughs> Quite foolish of them in hindsight. But something went wrong and uh, they disappeared. No longer to be seen. Now, is that just a story the gnomes tell their young to scare them into more pragmatic and practicable practices? Possibly, potentially. But we find in most myths are usually based on a grain of truth. Outside of Faversham, we have Bolrum, as I'm afraid to say Muagor is next closest in both proximity and dur- travel duration. It's a short boat ride directly north. You could be there and there within the day. I then no to Bolrum. First. We will go, but not first. It is your choice to make. Mm. Obviously, Kerndor and Thesk, equidistant from Faversham, east and west, relatively. And of course, the Underdark, to those that know it, has many entrances and exits across the globe. It would surprise me terribly if there were none to be found in this city. I'm sure Cobb could assist you in that, should you need it. I mean, look. I reckon we all just split up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Synchronised watches. Yeah. yeah. Be back here yeah. in a week. How long would it take us to get to Elisari? 
Roughly. Well, you could get a, the, the cheapest, slowest way would be a boat uh, to the Trade Federation, to Genabaris, you'd travel through. And then a boat on the other side to the continent. Or, actually, who's familiar with Elisari here? I would love to talk about it. <laughs> but all I know is a uh, Thavish. All I know is it's a gorgeous place. You are absolutely correct, of course. It has one unique defining character that sets it apart from all the other establishments in the world, and that it is high in the sky. I would recommend for an expeditious travelling to Alessari to take one of the more expensive, prohib- prohibitively so, airships. Look at money. Yeah, but how long? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she says, it'll be about a week's voyage. We could possibly bash out like two of these in that same amount of time if we stuck on this continent. Yeah, I mean, having to go against him last time, I mean, we didn't fight him. He just kind of... Exactly. Like, I feel like we got to run through like a couple of these like small fry before we get to the bigger stuff, you know? Yeah, you mentioned he was looking into powerful, the power surges in the yes. SRI, so whatever's there must be a powerful item. One would assume. I can see who's going to be the brains of this operation. I'm glad you are on board. Man, just, like, were you raised in a barn? <laughs> no, she was raised in the SRI. It's a gorgeous place. Well, they don't <laughs> have barns there. No, I don't think they would. No. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Schools. Oh, yeah, because they're mutually exclusive. Oh, man. Do you know what? I take it back. Fuck this place. <laughs> <laughs> now you get it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck the patriarch. <laughs> Perhaps someone would like to peruse. Give me that. <laughs> you don't try and read it again. The choice is yours. <laughs> <laughs> As mentioned, Cobb, my assistant, is here to assist you in any means you require. Now, I have my duties and responsibilities here as provost of the school. I must remain at least partially present in running things. I am myself a person of interest, I'm sure, on many people's lists. Most notably this creature that we're after. Were I to act out of the ordinary, that would start to raise eyebrows if indeed they had any. Good one. That, that was a question. I've not. <laughs> oh, you weren't joking. <laughs> no, I, you said sunken eyes, so I. Uh, do you know what a joke is? I am familiar with humour, yes. <laughs> Doesn't seem. Yeah. Well, when you show me any, I will let you know. Nerd. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> she. Recrosses her legs back over the other one. <laughs> <laughs> this book you mentioned. Oh yes, yeah. That would be good to take a look through that if we can. Yes, well, when Cobb shows you out, he can help you with that. Here's my right hand man. Let's say my weapon in. It. And she she glances at him and he. Shoots her a little side eye back again. Inside check. Hmm. Are they fucking? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not particularly good at this. I just fall away. You want the T? Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, there is a pre-existing relationship between the two. You can't discern from the short interaction you've had whether there is romantic no. level there, but they get on. She's pegged him. <laughs> He's a bottom. <laughs> uh, he is my tool that goes to places that I that I can't. So the less well-to-do areas of Faversham, the more nefarious areas, places that it's not befitting of me to be seen. Cobb has his contacts there. He has power there. That is his area of expertise. He can also hold himself well in a fight. That's putting it lightly. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, any leads on these? Is the prime movers? Uh, let me have a look. 
half scribbled handwriting. Um, <coughs> well, uh, Cobb steps forward. Oh, there we go. Oh, there and it says, is. Uh, well, back in the room. if I may, I don't know about none of this averages have gone awry or balances or the, the immaterium. Mm. That's Olvara's shindig. What I know is that there's a batty old gnomish bastard shouting to high heaven about two hours walk north from this building. And he's, he's talking about the end times. He's talking about the apocalypse. He's talking about oh, they're coming back. They're going to bring with them death and destruction. Ooh. Place to start. Oh, was that Cal was in the room? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good place to start. I mean, it's basically calling to us. I can, uh, I can take you to him. Let's do that. There you go. Plan made. Well done. Well done, team. Break on free. Nope. <laughs> do not touch me. Yeah. <laughs> you go to do it. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, but still, there you go. Plan made. Wow. I love it. I feel, I feel good about this. Minus the... How this all began. But right now, we got this in the bag. Easy. Right? Yeah, right. Because I'm shake a bake. Shake a bake. Moogle. Are you in on this slogan they do? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, Over my head. <laughs> we were shouting it during the battle, but you were really far away because it looked like you well, were we running. Were, you know, dealing with the danger. Yeah. It's true. Back to back. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Let's go, Cobb. Show us where this gnomish... Dude is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, she says, oh, well, that's quite unusual, but I thought I'd be transparent before you leave, of course. Uh, in regards of payment for your works, there are none. The recompense you will find in whatever it is you find out there in the world. We have no need for it. We, in fact, do not wish to be tied back to it. So whatever you find is yours to keep, aside from the items on the list. Also, kind of, you know, stopping people from being killed. Indeed, a prize in of itself. The greatest of all. Acts of selflessness. Well, pleasure to meet you. Thank you for the information. I will assist as much as I can in my role of as provost here at Renarts. Again, limited in a way. You may find ways to reach out to me. Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck. Good to shake her hand. She stands up from her desk and you see a short... <sighs> pair of short shorts. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Ten shorts. How tight are the shorts? <laughs> so tight. <laughs> uh, no, a, a kind of the bottom part of a blouse that's been ruffled up when she's been crossing her legs rolls down to now cover her the knees. And she just cordially like... One hand underneath. She doesn't take your hand to shake it. She just cordially bows. Her her silver ponytail falling down. I'm getting I'm real Sharon Stone vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I bow as well. Yeah, fuck. I bid you adieu. Uh, Who's? <laughs> keep my hands in my pockets. Wow. Whew. Hard to get. He's got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to leave in a few moments if that's all right. I'm just stood against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you've got a book. I'm like, oh, this is a really great book. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> close it shut. How are we? So uh, she says, well. Cobb, it seems no rest for the wicked. Over to you. Get nothing from them. And he just. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what are you trying to do? <laughs> what? 
You said you don't even offer, you don't even bow. Oh, no, 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 no. Just uh, me, Nathan, was just saying we don't get anything from her. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Go do this deathly mission. <laughs> Not going to get anything from me, though. <laughs> She's the provost. Oh. That's just Muagor. That's all, folks. Cobb says, uh, Gentlemen, if you'll be so kind. And he starts to head out of the office. <laughs> Trench coat. Blowing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> wind? In the wind. <laughs> sweating in here. Windy hallways. Yeah. Uh, as you, you, you follow him out. Mm. Yeah. As you start to do so, she just you just hear a tink, tink, tink. And you turn back to look and she's tapping that glass ball that was on her desk. She is. And she, huh? She is. <laughs> she's focusing on that. She's looking at you. Oh. She's tapping the ball. And she says, I will be able to keep an eye on you through this. So, just so you're aware. Not creepy at all. Is there anything loose? On our way out, you want to steal something? I don't know, like a pen or something, <laughs> a souvenir. Yeah, <laughs> no, not like that. One of our shoes by the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Pair of dirty knickers off the right <laughs> for some reason. That's weird. <laughs> get she won't mind if they go walk about. <laughs> You see Slevin, instead of a bandaged face, it's just knickers. <laughs> well, your bandages look a little bit different, a little bit frilly. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, I didn't make this a thing, all right? They did. You're yeah. a sick pervert, all right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, You're you disgusting, You actually. can't write it now. I'm just irked, and I just want to take you something... <laughs> Fully talked. And if there's something within... Reach, yeah, like one of those chess pieces that the dude was playing around with, or anything like that. All right, I just there's, wanna... there's Nicky Nackies, yeah, you can, <laughs> Nickers and Nacks you can take out. I just want to try and grab something. You that looks it. nice. Yeah, come on, roll me, grab, roll me a stealth. Grab a load of that young dick. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't chess pieces, my man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Slight of hand or stealth? Did you say? Uh, slight hand, sorry, yeah. Slight of hand. Uh, 17. Okay. Uh, Just a quick little... Boop! You all sick. <laughs> on, on the way out, as you pass through the door frame to the back out into the hallway, the bookshelf does like come up flush with the door frame and on the shelf in front of it, there does appear to be um, a box that's like an ink quill set that's just one of several you've seen in this office. Yeah, see you later. We <laughs> <laughs> roll for her now. <laughs> Cobb didn't catch her, but he was already at the door. That's why I did it. <laughs> yes, I will be seeing you later. Is what Alvaro says as you leave the office. Okay. Because we'd be coming back to you. Yep. What was that? And she'll ink be seeing set. This in the yeah. <laughs> like a, uh, you know, ink pot and a quill in a nice kind of a lever arched, what's the word? For something that opens like a chest. Hinge. Hinged. Box. Ink set. Nice. In brackets. <laughs> yes. Uh, Cobb starts to lead you through the corridors of Renarth's. This time, you're going a completely different direction. For all of you, you were brought the same way these guys were. Uh, and you start to descend back down onto the ground floor. You start to pass some more uh, the school, the lessons and the training and the teachers and stuff in the school rooms. Before he takes you to a door that he has to unlock with a set of keys. And he takes you underground. You can tell because there's no windows, and you were on the ground floor a moment ago. And you've descended, <clears throat> and he. Take, it's like an archive down here, basically. It is. There's loads of boxes, there's loads of chests, there's loads of dusty old cabinets, and 
books and all sorts of paraffins down here. There might be a method to its storage duodecimal system. Like, <laughs> if you know what you're looking for, you could probably find it. But you guys don't. It's some literal and figural, figurative arcane method of storing items. He worms his way through, passing various <clears throat> interesting accoutrements before opening a small box again hinged thank you Mark <laughs> and there is a small leather bound tome like A5 size beaten warm um, and clearly showing a lot of signs of use and wear and tear and he says uh, I think Otto you said this is no, someone, or was it Rizal said you wanted that? I can't remember which one yeah. was that said you wanted it on the way out. Yeah. So he uh, he hands it to you and says, uh, perhaps this will help you on your journey. I imagine you've already, uh, and of course the Provost have had a good look through this already, but uh, <laughs> yes, a few more eyes might not hurt. It's yours to take for the duration of the mission. I'll make sure it's looked after. Thank you. And he begins begins to lead you out of Renarth's foundation for the talented. And that's where we'll end the session Ooh. today. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Tight, 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 tight. Welcome, Rizzle Kicks. Look at that. Rizzle Kicks. Rizzle Kicks. <laughs> nice. Oh, get down with the trumpets. Oh. Hell no, isn't it, still? That is an absolute banger. Slept on. <laughs> Truly. This is great. <laughs> There's oh, so much stuff that I need to get. I love all the props. They're great. I think the props, the hats, the wig, it's all been beautiful. Prologue's, <laughs> prologue's over now. We're in the, we're in the end game now. Oh, the beginning. The, end game. Game. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the campaign. I'll roll this back up. Wait, how much, how much gold does everybody have? Do we still have half of what? We right, have, we have half of the <laughs> <laughs> Because we got given gold. half when we started. I feel like it was 5,000. I feel like it was five. I can check, yeah. but yeah, you've got plenty. Cool. I got five hundred. Yeah. I'm going to buy so This bitch. Stuff. Yeah, healing just go potions. travel the world healing and find potions. all this stuff. It's oh, going to yeah. cost you. You don't need healing potions. He can heal. I can heal. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. A couple of healing potions. Cow was like... Yeah. Laying dead. No one healed him. The game, the game is finished. No more roleplay. <laughs> <laughs> Save this for next session. Save, Save this, this gold. Yeah. People want to hear it, but they want to hear it within the bounds of an episode. <laughs> where, do, where does Matt end and Moogle we'll begin? Whoa. I think the same place Otto and Mark end and begin. <laughs> <laughs> the limit does not exist. <laughs> Um, thank you all for listening at home. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we're still live. We are live. We're still going. We're not, we're not, in that, we're not there yet. We are still live. Please do not swear. Uh, thank you all for watching the stream. Cool. Thanks. Oh, I'm waving, but don't don't wave yet. I haven't finished wrapping oh, up. Oh yeah, just wave each other. <laughs> thank you all for those who have watched this on the stream uh, if people want to get a good deal on t-shirts such as this one what can they do Briggsy head on the, over to Game T use discount code the Briggsy for 5% off of your entire order they ship worldwide worldwide oh, oh, worldwide so. thank you Catch me on Thinking Critically the Code at UK. Catch us on all your social media platforms and video platforms TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, X, Instagram. D-d-d-d-pod. At DDND Pod uh, as our tag on absolutely everything. Otherwise, it's been a pleasure to host your game this evening. Thank you and good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.